Keys to the season. Who holds them? Let's go. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video and comment anything below. We're six days away from opening Day A week from now, uh, Thursday evening, we will be cracking the mic after a real Cubs game, Sam. Uh, pretty crazy, right? Yeah, uh, a week from a week from today. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy as we as we are talking. I just pulled up the the game because I was watching the Illinois game. So I didn't even see uh, what happened uh, much today. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's a good day. Uh, it's a good time to be around. I mean, two big stories today. One that has nothing to do with the Cubs that made me happy. And then a Cubs story, Drew yeah. Smiley, Drew Smiley, who got shelled again today, by the way, oh, um, gosh. is uh, is not starting. Uh, he will go to the rotation. I just want to, I, I know we're going to talk about it later. I just want to say one quick thing. It's such a serious move by council. The the easy thing to do would be, hey, it's a veteran, like Lance said on the show, a high floor guy. No, he stinks when he's a starter, right. okay? And when he's a reliever, he's really good. So it's yeah. du- you're, you're getting two things for him. And everyone always says that I'm on Assad. I'm thrilled that Assad will be pitching against Colorado. It's a good move for the Cubs. I'd like to see the bats get going a bit before we go to Arlington a week from today. All right, fantastic. Well, there is a few spring training games left for that to occur. And there's still a couple position and pitching battles as well in the bullpen and on the bench. We're going to get to that in the second segment. But certainly big news that Craig Council announced. Smiley to the pen, Wicks Assad in the rotation. Again, we'll do our uh, roster projection coming up later. Also, best and worst on this fun Friday episode. Well, we've talked about him a few times, especially really in the last week or so. Uh, both of these players a lot this offseason. One uh, was in a hypothetical sense for a while because he was uh, not signed up with the team for a long time. We hope that he would return. And one is a, a new player. And we're going to talk about the keys to the season, Sam, uh, positionally and on the pitching staff. And when you look at the starting rotation, you do get a sense that Shota Imanaga could rise up and really put a surge into this rotation. Uh, the rotation is a point of weakness for me, at least on paper. Right. And if he's able to step up, you know, with with adequate amount of rest, given his transition to the states from from Japan. Uh, he could be not only a a solid third starter, but really win help w- uh, win the Cubs a lot of games. Well, yeah, and I just think he's a key because of the of the variance. It's the same with like Bush. Like these right. are these are guys where I mean, you saw Yamamoto this morning. Ah, yikes! One inning, four runs. You know what I mean? Like these guys that come overseas or that you don't know about. The, you know, there's just a lot of up and down. Nobody saw Kodai Sanga after a month last year, almost sneaking in a Cy Young award. Uh, it, it comes, th- th- there's a lot That's of true. just question marks. And so, you know, I associate question marks with keys, um, you know, like, yeah. because, because that's, that's just what you don't know. I mean, it, it's very hard to, you know, uh, uh, knock it down to one player, whether it's Bell and German, I like right now, you know, Nico Horner's had an awful spring. Dansby Swanson's had an awful spring. You know, these guys, they have to hit a certain level or the Cubs aren't going to be good, but you just assume by, by their career baseball cards that they're going to get there. Um, so, you know, assuming that everything's equal, who, who are the guys that could really take a step forward or who are the guys where it's like, Oh man, we don't really know. And I think Imanaga is one of those guys, but you know, and I know we're not supposed to go off spring a ton, but what else can you go off of with Imanaga? Because yeah, he has big yeah. leaguers. Yeah. And, you know, 
we've seen the home run ball, but we've seen a ton of whiffs. And so I, I, I'm just excited. I'm excited for the unknown of that. And I think that, you know, he's one of those guys where if, if he's really good, I have a hard time seeing us not being a good team. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put that because Steele's a, a fantastic anchor of the rotation as sure. as the lead person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like what I've seen out of Kyle Hendricks for the most part in spring. And for him to bounce back from a major injury last summer and pitch like he did was outstanding. Um, and, of course, really enjoy watching him pitch. And then behind him, we have the two dudes that, that council announced today. One that we that we started to assume, and Jordan Wicks, who is building up a resume. And then Javier Assad, who maybe he has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder to to stick around and make more starts than relief appearances yep. in, in 2024. Um, it's the yeah, best five. It's the best five that they have the best, right now. The best five. That they have right now until Tyone uh, comes back. And by the way, when we're thinking about rotation, does Ben Brown make an early May start and go back to Des Moines? Uh, mm -hmm. Do we see Kate Horton this summer or this fall? I hope so. And so you start getting encouraged by it as much as you can this early on. Uh, but the test for me initially that I'm excited for, again, not to take away too much from it, like you said, with Sanga and others as a good examples, but if it is Imanaga and Heaney game three in Arlington, I really am going to uh, take a close look at that and how will Imanaga open up. And there's, there's kind of neutral factors going on there too. Yeah. You're inside. Sure. Um, you know, he doesn't have to debut at, at, at ice cold Wrigley. I, I think there's a 50% chance of snow April 1st is what I'm seeing in the long range forecast. Yeah. You could go to that game with Kira. Um, so I'm out. that that's a good first game for him. And then he probably doesn't pitch again for a week or so. Yeah. And you know, not to count, I'm not, I'm not really trying to counter you, but I, with Imanaga, I'm really going to be patient with a, in April okay. because it's just, it, Yamamoto gets rocked. Sanga was awful in April last year for the most part. It, it's going to be an adjustment. There, there may be some, some growing pains. I want to see him find a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really going to overreact too much. And to be honest with you, I know this sounds crazy for me, but I was looking at the April schedule. To me, that's just going to be a, let's just get through that. You know what? I, I did a deep Seven, 17 and 15. And, and we're going to do a schedule episode next week. So I don't want to. Yeah. Do this. For Tuesday. Cause I did a huge deep dive. I got it all here, man. All of it with, with like record, right? Yeah, and 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 you know some mid September series I'm looking forward to. Oh my god! Yeah, we it's play a lifetime away. We play we, well. We play Oakland and the Nats at home. Oh wow! We're seven. Oh, that's big. I mean, that could be six out of if we're two games out, we go six out of seven. We flip the race, <laughs> and instead of last year closing at Atlanta, closing Milwaukee, we go to we go to uh, I believe the city city of brotherly love. Or, or we play Philly, and then we play the Reds wow. at home. Well, that's fantastic. So, so anyways, but yeah, I, I, with Imanaga, I'm going to preach patience uh, just because it, it, there's an adjustment period here. There just is. Yeah. With And especially if his first two starts are against the Rangers and Dodgers. Good luck. What yeah, Dodgers, that's that's hard. Well, the Dodgers hang up like 12 runs today. Um, it was like a football game, yeah. On the positional side, it's more of a question than the player, Sam, and that's – Will Cody Bellinger have a big impact again yeah. for the Cubs? Um, he hit so well last year. He was so strong defensively at two spots. July and August, he put up video game numbers offensively. His two-strike approach did work, and it really was not a sacrifice for his power as he still posted 26 yeah. Yeah, you're right. home runs. So. Yeah. If he could have a big impact again, and you could pencil him three pretty much every game, that just becomes by default a, a, a giant key and a giant uh, advantage for the Cubs. Yeah, I think Bellinger is going to be fine. I don't know if he'll be the guy that he was last year, but I don't think he's going to bottom out either. Uh, it's probably going to be something in the middle. I really haven't watched him much this spring just because I don't think it means anything. He probably, I mean, yeah. he had a long lead, I mean, a mentally challenge offseason. I mean, 
not not that it's difficult when you know you're about to get a lot of money, but just the back and forth, where am I going? You know, there's hundreds of millions of dollars at stake. I mean, I'm sure it's just taking him a second to digest the contract yeah. and come back. I think Bellinger will be fine. I like where he's going to be slotted in the lineup because he proved last year that in big spots he'll shorten up and and get and get some base hits instead of, you know, all or nothing. So, um I, I look at Bellinger more as a and obviously I could be dead wrong on this. I, I think there's a lot of like, oh, is Bellinger going to be great again? Or is Bellinger going to be awful? And I think he's going to probably be somewhere in the middle. And I think it's going to be on some other guys. Like Dansby Swanson's got to hit better. Like, like you know, one of these things like that bothers me is because the other shortstops in the league aren't great and because he's so great defensively, I get, I get, I get this all the time. Hey, he had the highest war among shortstops. He's a superstar. No, he's not. Okay, no, superstars not. don't bat 245. A superstar? He's an all-star caliber player because of the defense He's he plays. He's elite at his, defensively. Yeah, at his position. Right. But he needs to take a step forward offensively. And and if he doesn't, then Nico does. And if yeah. neither of those guys do, then happen Suzuki better. You know, because at the end of the day, there's a lot of really good stuff with Bush. And and we all like Matt Shaw and Owen Casey and, you know, Morrell. But the core of this team is is built around Swanson, Horner, Hap, Bellinger and Suzuki offensively. Oh yeah. Those guys you know when when the, when the team was really bad in June and I waved the white flag, those guys were all performing not well. Um you know Ian Hap needs to hit 25 homers, okay? He has way too much natural power not to. Um at least 20. Yeah, I know 25, okay? Well, I'll decide that. You know, and and Suzuki, we've talked about like 27 plus for Seiya. It's not about, you know, hey, we're all hanging out. We're being supporting cast members. One of these guys, or to use your term, one of these brothers uh, <laughs> uh, every month or two is going to have to come out and put a Superman cape on and carry this club every once in a while. And Morel will do it, I'm sure, in spurts too. I mean, last year he had a home run for in like eight games in a row. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's really and, and and to me, it's not about one player. And I talked about this uh, on yesterday's show. The key is, can these guys can a, one or two of these guys get off the hey, Ian Hap's a nice player. They're all good players. None of them are bad. Yeah, but We've talked about who's going to be great. And last yes. year in July and August, Cody Bellinger was gr- great. And that led a 33 and 17, whatever it was, 33 and 14 charge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so let's get some greatness. Absolutely. Love it. Fired up, fired up inside one week from the real first game. Speaking of that, how are the Cubs going to line up for that first game in terms of their 26 players that make the trip to Arlington? We're going to go over that one final time if I can't help myself uh, coming up next. Welcome back to Ibotta to Locked On Cubs. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time. You shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Join the over 50 million savers and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,000 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. That's right, just $5 for trying it when you register. Go to the Apple or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back by using code locked on MLB. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A, and use code locked on MLB. And this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And speaking of that... The Illini are dancing into the second round. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're back here on Locked On Cubs and a new and final roster projection. If I can or can't help myself, I'm not really sure of the exact terminology there, but we have actual roster updates. Ooh, from that's Craig a Council. great question. I know, right? If I if I can't help myself, if I can help myself, it's can. It's can. I thought it was can. It is. It's can. I because had that saying, Google I can't Docs changed it, dude. Well, I could be wrong because on the ACTs in English, I didn't do great. Okay, brought down my overall score. I could have wow, could have been in the wow. could have could have been something special. I really like this roster. It is a football field away from last year's team, hmm. or more. Interesting. Last year had the brother Mancini, <laughs> Hosmer. Barnhart, Terenz. Dude, I saw Larice Terenz at my local Mariano's last weekend. Hey, he's kidding, folks. We don't need any trouble. This roster doesn't have anything like that. Let me put it up. Steele, Hendricks, and Monaga, Wicks, Assad is the rotation. A bullpen of Almonte, Edwards, who's being added. Smiley, thank you, Council. Quas, Lighter, Neris, Merriweather, and Alzalai. And actually, I think that's done. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised yep. if Edwards doesn't make it, but that's the pitching staff is done. hundred percent agree, and I like that group. Catchers, Gomes and Amayo. We've known that since October. Yeah. Infielders, Swanson, Horner, Bush. We know that. Master Boldy has to make this club, fam. And then we got Cooper and Smith both being added as Wisdom and Madrigal likely hit the IL and or AAA Iowa to open the year. Uh, Morrell has kind of been in his own category, obviously, utility and DH. And then an outfield of Hap, Bellinger, Suzuki, and Talkman. That's the 26, Sam. Come on. It's a great roster, and I got to give us a, a little Come credit. On. Because I I think I did a decent job with this, uh, uh, having some of these guys. I usually have no idea, but we'll see. Um, I think Smith and Cooper will be the big questions. But if Madrigal's on the right. IL, that's fine. But let me ask you this, Matt. I, yeah, I gotta good put, call on Mastro, who's basically a lock at this point. I got to put you on the spot. Yeah. Also, yeah, and, and Almonte, I think I think we all just were like, well, he's not pitching. So, like, if he's healthy, he's going to make the team. Yeah, well, he pitched. He, he's kind of caught up now. He yeah, he's caught up. their fifth inning today. Yeah, and, he threw, and he's thrown well. He's yeah. a don't, – don't count him out, you know. Right, just, right. You know, let me just say that. Uh, um, can you pan back to me, please? Yeah, what were you going – were you going to talk about these uh, position guys? No, I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, okay. Because – you said you really like this roster. I do. And it is, you're, you're right. You make a great point. There is no, last year we started this roster with, with three massive amounts of dead weight. With you, only had, you only had like three outfielders. Mancini, Terenz, and Hosmer. No disrespect to them personally. You could even add Barnhart. It was an awful, yeah. it was awful. Right. But yet you're under 83 and a half win. Well... I am starting to warm up okay. my thoughts on this club. Okay. Um, a writer that I followed for a long time, that was a long time, 670 The Score guest as well, Joe Sheehan. Yep. Who puts out a good newsletter every week. Uh, I'm a subscriber. Mm -hmm. He has the Cubs at a number that you're not going to believe. I think I'm going to shoot him an email this weekend, see if we can get him on. 90? Uh, add six to that. He has 96 wins. 96. <laughs> this is one of the greatest days of my life. Somebody get me a Gatorade Zero. I need a Glacier Freeze. No sugar, <laughs> please. I can't do any sugar. 96 wins from, from someone that lives and breathes and knows baseball. Joe Sheehan. He has I, them 13 games over the FanDuel. Over, I, under? I think I'm going to have chicken wings tonight. You know what I mean? Oh, we got a work outing. Going to be out with a lot of people. So 96 it is, wins? It's extremely likely. In well, fact, I'm going to say it right now. We're almost at the 20-minute mark of this episode here on a Friday. If this team goes over 96 wins, you you, you and I, and, and Kira doesn't have to worry about a thing. We'll take care of it. We're going to get a condo. Right. 
You know, and actually, we're going to get a second home, dude. I'm going to say it right here at the 20-minute mark of this show. Because really, this show, Sam, is the last episode of the offseason, in my mind. Really? Yes. Why would that be? Well, maybe Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, well, they don't play till Thursday. I know, but next week's game week. Yeah, it's game week. I'm taking the over 83 and a half. All right. Nice to have you back on our side. All right. Took me a couple weeks, but I'm there. Um, Let's see what moves they make in the next six, seven days. I I do think a Mervis or Thompson uh, trade or DFA is possible. David Bodie, by the way, uh, not making the team. So you guys, we could stop DMing me about that. Be Bode awesome. Bodie got sent to Look, minor league camp. As I love well. you guys. Valencia, I answer, minor I answer, league camp. I answer all my messages, even the ones about David Bodie. Absolutely. Coming up next, let's do best and worst of the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV, our great partner here on the show. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and shows as well as free and live TV, including all of us here at Locked On with Fire TV channels. Those let you dive in to the world of sports, not to mention news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust us on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news from all of our hosts here at the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On Sports Today, always streaming on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV app. Let's go to best and worst of the week here on a Friday episode, Sam. And I think your best of the week might be just in the last hour. Illinois won and Joe Sheehan said 96 wins. Um, What do you got this week? Matt, uh, this is a big announcement for me. Oh. A lot of people, a lot of people know the show, everydayers. Yes. They know some, they know sometimes. I lean on the glass half empty side. I'd like to announce publicly for the first time in a while, there is no worst of the week for me right now. Go Cubs. I I am not complaining. My team won. Probably Sunday. I'm going to have a very different tone. Best of the week. March Madness. Yeah. Cubbies are getting close. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, I didn't even have that good of a week at work. But who cares? You know what I mean? <laughs> this is it. This weekend we're gonna we're gonna eat, we're gonna drink, we're gonna watch games. It's gonna be a great time, and and uh, so no worse for me. Oh, that's great. I didn't list any worst either. I think for the second or third straight week, uh, at least at least ones that I want to list publicly. That is, <laughs> um, but no, I I feel I feel good, doing well over here in the uh, suburb of uh, suburbs of Chicago as we are, uh, Sam and Sam and I. And, uh, you know, I want to take this opportunity to say, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, you, you don't have much here. My best of the week. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's all right. You know, take your time. No, my best of the week. I did want to promo our, our other show. Oh, okay. Uh, Matt and Sam unlocked. The link is in this episode description as I, uh, man, I am really fidgety right now. Um, we would love your support over there prior to opening day. You know, what's in my mind, once Thursday hits next week, I mean, it's full go. Oh, yeah. Full go. Um, you know, that's it. It's a different It's a different time period. Off season versus the regular season is t- two totally different things. And I, I'm here for it. I'm ready. Uh, but for to, to continue to support us further and for non-Cub stuff, we're, we are going to be over there. Matt and Sam Unlocked link is in the episode description. Also, at this time, we want to start promoing 
So next week, we're going to talk lineup projection, April schedule, um, Cubs Rangers preview. Incredible. We're going to do Cubs Rangers post game Thursday night after the game. For our Wednesday episode, uh, for, for the audio and video peeps, we're going to record that at 7 p.m. Central Tuesday. So 7 p.m. Central Tuesday for Wednesday. I want wanna, I want 500 people live. If you want to catch us live, we're going to be exclusively on YouTube. Then the next day on the replay um, on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts on the audio side. But that is going to be more of a sound off type show for the most part. Kind of our last uh, round, last call before the regular season, like we're saying. And so if you want to be on the show. Send an email to loc soundoff at gmail.com. L O C S O U N D O F F at gmail.com. We've had a ton of listeners on this show. We've had repeat listeners on. Uh, perhaps we hear from them a third or fourth time, but also want to hear from new people, including those listening right now at Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Sirius XM. Uh, pull up the computer Tuesday night. We would love to have you. Um, you just need to send an email prior to being on the air. I'll shoot you back some directions and a link to, to where we record. And we'll be on as long as we have uh, live listeners. So 7 p.m. Tuesday, this uh, coming Tuesday. And if you want to be on, email me, loc_soundoff at gmail.com. All right, anything else, Sam? Um, I think Miguel Amaya wears number six. That's all I got. Ah, that's right. Six days away. And he does. He switched it from his, uh, I think the first. Wait. Was he a different number last year? I'm bad with number. Okay. I think he might have changed his number. Somebody looked that up. Thank you for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs. With a laugh or two along the way, I think he changed it to number nine, actually, for this year. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, smash the like button for the algorithm, and leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcast. He's Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs. There is momentum happening here.